In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a Salesian of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Tuesday, the 8th of October, 2024, 27th week in Ordinary Time, and participating in the proclamation of the Word of God for today are the following Daily Bread members. Joss Andred from Vindok, Namibia, celebrating his birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Mariatu Kaikai from Freetown, Sierra Leone, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Virgilius Kawama, who celebrates his birthday day after tomorrow, a missionary of Africa working in Nairobi, Kenya. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayers do not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. He revealed his Son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Galatians chapter 1, verses 13 to 24. Brethren, you have heard of my former life in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God violently and tried to destroy it. And I advanced in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people, so extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and had called me through his grace was pleased to reveal his son to me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with flesh and blood Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away into Arabia, and again I returned to Damascus. Then, after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to visit Caiaphas and remained with him fifteen days. But I saw none of the other apostles, except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then, I went into the regions of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still not known by sight to the churches of Christ in Judea. They only heard it said, He who once persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy, and they glorified God because of me. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 139, verse 1 to 3, 13 to 14, and 15. Respond is taken from Psalm 139, verse 24b. And the response is, Lead me, Lord, in thy way everlasting. Lead me, Lord, in thy way everlasting. O Lord, you search me and you know me. You yourself know my resting and my rising. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark when I walk or lie down. You know all my ways through and through. Lead me, Lord, in thy way everlasting. For it was you who formed my inmost being. Knit me together in my mother's womb. I thank you who wonderfully made me. How wonderful are your works which my soul knows well. Lead me, Lord, in thy way everlasting. 
my fame was not hidden from you. When I was being fashioned in secret and molded in the depths of the earth, lead me, Lord, in thy way everlasting. Gospel acclamation. Luke 11, verse 28. Hallelujah. Blessed are those who hear the word of the Lord and keep it. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke 10, verses 38 to 42. At that time, Jesus entered the village, and a woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much saving, and she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to save alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion which shall not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Paul, in dealing with the problems of the two Gospels in the Galatian community, starts by talking about his own experience. He did not gain his access to Christ because he was circumcised. No, it was all by the grace of God. He thought he was doing the right thing, just like those who came to preach another gospel thought they were doing the right thing. I have seen many zealous people who get up from their homes and go to preach a wrong gospel. Making people understand that Jesus is not even God. Making people think that he did not even rise from the dead. They spend a lot of their energy in destroying the true gospel. But you know what? At the end of the day, they are going to realize that they are mistaken. Just like Paul realized he was mistaken. He narrates how he came to God by grace. Not by power. He was using his strength to go and destroy the church until grace met him. And when grace met him, it also took time for the apostles to really accept him. They still named him the one who used to persecute the church. People may give you all sorts of names. People may give you the old name, but understand this. When God starts working in you, he changes your name. Let people keep your old name, but God has a new name for you and is going to use you. Even when people say, is that not the one who was breaking the homes of others? And now he's standing in church to preach. Just say, it is God's grace. It is not by power. It's not by might. When God comes to you, your life changes. The gospel passage of today talks about the various ministries in the church, the various vocations that we have represented by Mary and Martha. We have contemplatives and we have active people. And none of the cause God has given us is superior to the other. We just have to make sure that we are not distracted. Martha is reprimanded for being distracted. For not realizing that whatever she is doing is for God. And she shouldn't even look at others who are doing something else. To think that they are not doing the right thing. We are fond of that. We have so many Christians who are head boys or head girls. And they think that they can patronize others. They think that their religion or their way of life is superior to others. I see people poking their noses in the worship of other people. These Catholics. You Catholics worship idols. Excuse me, why are you wasting time in that? 
Focus on your own call. You are becoming Martha. Where you even tell Jesus, can't you see? This one has left everything to me. I should be helped. Come on. You worry about too many things. Only one is important. And Mary has taken a better part and it will not be taken away from her. Mary is in the right place. You are also in the right place. Just stop comparing. Stop looking at others. Do your work diligently. You may not be a selection of Don Bosco, but as a Franciscan, you are doing something great for the poor. As a Jesuit, you are doing something to educate others. As a Carmelite in your contemplative life, you are doing something for God. So you are okay where you are. You may not be a Catholic. You may be an Anglican. You may be a Methodist. You may belong to evangelical churches. You may be a Seventh-day Adventist. You are well placed. Just be dedicated to where you are and live your life according to the demands of your church, of your ministry, of the word of God, and you will never go wrong. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you. Thanks be to God.